I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading, and each year around hunting season here, we see a lot of questions pop up about leaving your muzzleloader loaded after a day of hunting, not taking any shots. Is it safe to leave my muzzleloader on the porch, you know, outside my hunting cabin overnight? Is that load gonna work the next morning when I line up on that trophy buck? Today, we're gonna do some practical application testing here to see if your load is going to work the next morning. We're gonna extend that and see how many days you can leave your muzzleloader loaded to you know, kind of confidently know if it's gonna work or not. In this test in particular, we're gonna be testing Hodgdon's 777, the 2F variant. If you're interested in seeing some of the other black powder substitutes or traditional black powder in different kinds of muzzleloaders, I encourage you to check out the videos for those specific tests at ilovemuzzleloading.com. To get started here, I have my Traditions St. Louis Hawken. I've pulled it out of the safe. I have checked the bore just as a safety precaution, to, as every Everybody should to make sure that this is not loaded. To get started here, we're gonna pop two caps down the bore to make sure that all of our cleaning solution or oil is out of the bore, and then we're gonna load the muzzleloader. In this test, I'll be using CCI number 11 Magnum percussion caps. I think this is going to give us the best shot we have at igniting this 777. It's kind of what gets recommended to me a lot when it comes to shooting 777 in a side lock. Got my cap here, setting on half cock. To do this safely, I'm just pointing this muzzle directly at the ground as I pull the trigger, and I'm looking to make sure that I see a leaf or pieces of dirt moving out of the way of the muzzle. That's gonna tell us, even though we already know, this is going to tell us that the bore is not obstructed in any manner. This is number two. Now, this is an important step that many of us forget from time to time. I'm going to put this on half cock and remove the cap that I've just popped. We'll set our hammer back down to rest on the nipple. Uh, so that we don't damage those springs at all and we don't have any uh, you know, unexpected ignitions down the road. To load today, I'm as part of my review of the Cedar Mountain quick loaders, we're gonna be using this. I have a pre-measured charge of 777 in here. Uh, this was sent to me to review. I'm not fully done with the review yet, just including this in part of the process here. Uh, you can expect that a little bit of a later date. So we'll pour our 777 down. And then I'm using a lubed patch 495 round ball. These patches are lubed with RMC Ox Yokes Wonder Lube. I've also enjoyed the Frontiers Bear Grease from Buckskins and Blackpowder.com. Now the only thing to do is let this sit and wait just as if we'd been out hunting this morning and we're coming back in for the night uh, to warm up by the fire before heading back out the next day. Now I wanna say it's important that we leave this unprimed for this test as you should if you're coming in from your muzzleloader hunt. If you've come in, you haven't taken a shot for that day, deprime that muzzleloader, take the 209 primer out the back, uncap your nipple if you're using a percussion muzzleloader, or dump the priming powder out of your flintlock pan to make sure they're leaving this set safely. As we conduct this test, I'll pull up the weather data for each day at my location. I will say it's a blustery mid-October day. We just had a nice rain last night and we're just about at 40 degrees as we're recording here. So the, the conditions are going to vary. Uh, like I said, we're in the Midwest here, so we do have a little bit of humidity in the air this time of year. So it, th that might vary. Uh, so, I mean, don't take this test as gospel. I really encourage you to do this test on your own if you're very concerned about doing this kind of thing. You don't wanna pull up on that trophy buck for the year uh, and have a load not go off. So, uh, you know, while this is a fun test to do and I'm happy that you're watching and I hope you're enjoying it, it's always important to conduct your own testing in your own area with your own materials and conditions to get a really accurate test for you. Admittedly, this has been about 29 hours. It took me a little bit longer today to get out to the range here than I expected. So I just wanna be upfront about that. This isn't an exact 24 hour result test. After I finished the loading for this muzzleloader, the weather conditions really went downhill. We saw an afternoon and evening and an all night of rainy, wet, drizzle, sleet. It tried to snow a little bit here, but we didn't have anything stick to the ground as you can see here. So the conditions changed a little bit. Take that into account with the results as we fire this muzzleloader. Here I've got our Traditions St. Louis Hawking. So we're gonna place it here on half cock. Remember we have a number 11, well, we had a number 11 CCI percussion cap. I've dropped my cap, so I'm going to drop my hammer so that the muzzle loader is safe. I'm gonna point the muzzle in a safe direction. I'm gonna pick up my cap. And we'll try this again. Okay. I'm showing this to you in real time. 
So we had a cap snap. I'm gonna grab another cap here. We'll try this again. There we go. So we had to go through a few caps there to get that to go off, but it did indeed go off. Now, what does that mean? I think more testing really needs to be done to verify this result. Don't take this as gospel on the conditions and the, the functionality of 777 after a single night of setting out. What we're gonna do next to kind of continue with this test is we're gonna load this and let it set for three days. I'm wondering if just the extreme moisture that we went through last night has affected this or if it's just, you know, if it's by the nature of the powder or if there's something else that has contributed to this. At the loading bench now, I'm gonna run a dry cleaning patch down um, just to check the condition of this bore before we proceed with this test. We know that black powder and black powder substitutes like 777 can be corrosive when left to sit. I don't really want to sacrifice the conditions of the bores of my muzzleloader as we continue these tests. So after one shot of letting this sit for a night, that's as dirty as our patch is right there. Uh, not super dirty, not, uh, you know, it's not this disgustingly, you know, horribly dirty thing uh, when you shoot these black powder substitutes. I find it's just about as dirty as real traditional black powder. So I'm gonna run a couple cleaning patches down here just to make sure that my bore is nice and clean and it's not gonna suffer uh, in this test. And I'm gonna be sure to dry the bore thoroughly with dry cleaning patches so that we don't have any of that moisture affecting the load. The cleaner that I'm using for this is Shenandoah Valley. You can find this at a lot of small muzzle loading shops around the country. I think I got this from Deer Creek Products, but I've seen other people carry them. Really, I'm just showing you this. You're more than welcome to skip it, but just for transparency's sake with this test, there are a lot of variables that come into play with muzzle loading. And, uh, and doing a test like this is by no means meant to be exhaustive. The conditions that the manufacturers test it before they take something to market uh, is going to be quite expansive. I mean, they're testing this stuff in the field back and forth. I mean, that's with bullets and powder and primers. You know, my backyard tests are, are fun and I enjoy doing them. But uh, more testing, like I always say, especially for you at home, is important. So we're getting back acceptably dirty patches, uh, which is just to say, you know, it's not a, a spit shine, something I eat off of, but we're getting away from any black, corrosive, nasty stuff in that bore. And everything's coming back dry. I ran down three dry patches back and forth, both sides. So we have six dry patch passes down this bore. From there, I'm still testing the Cedar Mountain Quick Loader here. Uh, we'll take the spout, stick it down the bore, rotate it up, powder drains out, nice and handy. Give it a couple taps. Um, you know, testing for these is going well. I'm interested to see what you guys think about them. And we've got our 495 round ball with our lubed patch. Now we'll let this sit unprimed for the next three days and come back to see if it shoots. We're back on the range this morning after a full three days in between our last test. I have to say these were some of the nicest days I think we've had really this year. You know, half cock, I have my muzzle pointed in a safe direction through the entirety of this test. Okay, that's one. That's two. Shot number three. So three percussion caps here with the 2FG uh, seven out of this tradition St. Louis Hawken. Uh, so it's looking like the weather conditions aren't changing a whole lot for the 777 powder, in this test at least. As always with any of these tests, it's gonna change, it's gonna vary based on your components, your rifle, your weather conditions and everything. So please don't take any of this as gospel. Like I've said before, this is just one test by one guy in one geographic area here so your results might vary what we're going to do next just to see if it makes any difference at all is we're going to load this up and let it sit for seven days so if you've been hunting through the weekend and you have not taken a shot on that big trophy buck you're letting it set maybe through the week you know you got to go to work and then the next weekend 
you can line up and get out to shoot. We're gonna kind of emulate that here with this next test and see if we can get down to one or two caps maybe to get this to go off. Back at the loading bench with our tradition St. Louis Hawken, I'm gonna place it on half cock and remove our spent cap here, putting it to the side. As with any muzzle loader, we wanna make sure that we're leaving this set uncocked and unprimed. Pretty clean, we don't have any black powder residue, there's just some surface rust in there, but I'm, I'm not worried about that. After we do this test, we're gonna make sure we scrub and clean this muzzle loader down um, so we don't really have to worry about any, any damaging rust uh, down the road. I don't know that I showed it after cleaning for the one day test, but I'm gonna pop a cap down the board to make sure that we have uh, removed any solvents that could have gotten into the drum or the nipple, because that kind of moisture would affect uh, the performance. We're gonna go ahead and do two just to be sure. Okay, I'm gonna remove the spent cap, cast it to the side, place our hammer down onto the nipple. Again, we're using our Cedar Mountain Quick Loader loaded up with 777 in here. This is the 2FG variant from this bottle right here. I pre-measured all these charges just to make it a little easier. I wanna say real quick as we continue this powder, leaving it overnight test, not sure what really to call it, but I wanna say that, you know, there are a lot of variables when you're shooting and hunting with a muzzle loader, and that's really gonna change depending on your conditions, your rifle and your components. Uh, I strongly believe that all of the components that we're using here are manufactured really well. Uh, they've been used for generations and, and decades really in a lot of cases. Uh, there might be some variances year to year here, but across the board and the, the tests that I'm doing, these products wouldn't necessarily be on the market if they were total failures. Just something to keep in mind. Again, I'm not trying to lambast any of the manufacturers here. I'm just trying to get some real world transparent testing out there. I really just love muzzleloading and these testing videos don't really come out of uh, my own interest necessarily. They come from the questions and the emails and the, and the comments and messages that I get. Uh, so these questions somewhere along the lines need answered and uh, I'm happy to contribute to those answers. And I encourage anybody out there that's interested in this and, and watching this, try this in your own area. Go through the same parameters or similar parameters and, and post online you know, some of the results that you had just so that other muzzleloading enthusiasts out there can compare their results with their local area. The more we make all of this and as much information we can about muzzleloading open and transparent, the easier it is for more and more people to get involved. And that's really what we're here for. That's really what we all wanna see. We wanna see this continue for another couple hundred years. And we can't do that without being open, transparent, and kind to those interested in muzzleloading. It's been a full seven days now since we last shot this muzzleloader. And I have to say, weather-wise, it was kind of a roller coaster. We went from fall to winter to spring, back to fall. A little bit of some summer temps in there too, which is kind of interesting. I just want to show you here as an example, we're starting to see some surface rust here around the action of our muzzleloader. So we have just some surface rust around the drum, around the barrel here, and around the tank. Nothing that is, I consider, super bad or super dangerous, but that's the example I wanna show you as the kind of rust you can start to see on a muzzleloader if you've let it sit, especially outside for any period of time. When we cleaned this in between shots, we primarily just cleaned inside the bore. Uh, so if we hadn't, uh, I assume we could see similar kinds of surface rust on the interior. Once we take this shot and get this cleaned up and back in the safe, not gonna be worried about this at all. Little scrubbing and it'll be fine. Make sure our cap is securely on there. Hit our chicken and it went off the first cap. I think that's the first time we've had this 777 go off with a single cap and it sat for the longest. Now, I'm not sure, I'm not a meteorologist, and I need to do a little bit more research as far as the powders go to see if we can find a correlation there, but this sat the longest and went off with the first cap, unlike even just for a single day and for three days. So that's, that's really interesting. I'll be honest with you here, I did not expect the 777 to perform the best after setting for seven days. Uh, we had uh, some hiccups there on the one and three day tests, uh, but really the 777 came through real strong here after seven days. Uh, I'm really interested in what you think the reason that could be uh, because I wanna learn. I don't know an extreme amount really about this powder, um, but I'm really interested in its performance uh, since I've received a lot of questions about it in kind of the year of the shortage of Blackhorn 209 here. We've received a lot of questions about 777, a lot of folks online trying to find answers 
Uh, and really it's an efficient burning powder. We've tested some accuracy out of the powder uh, and it does well and it's done well since it was invented. I know that there's a lot of folks out there that only want to shoot real black powder and that's fine too but for many of us 777 or Pyrodex is the kind of thing that we can get our hands on and What's important at the end of the day is that we are shooting and enjoying our muzzle loaders. Like I pointed out already, we have a little bit of surface rust here around the drum and the nipple on this muzzle loader, but that's to be expected. Um, and after seeing that kind of surface level rust here on it, I did not expect it to go off the first shot. So I am really impressed. And uh, I think that serves as a marker to say, you know, more testing is, is needed really in, in different weather conditions. There's something about the last seven days that were different than the first four, if we add up the one and three day test there, uh, that made this powder perform differently. Now, uh, we had a little bit of moisture in the atmosphere, a little bit of rain earlier in the week, but we had pretty dry, dry conditions after that. So maybe it dried out in between those periods of time and was, was back and ready to go, or maybe it just didn't affect it at all. You know, maybe it wasn't enough rain, I'm not a meteorologist, I'm just kind of having fun with my muzzleloader here. As far as testing this further, I feel pretty confident that if you keep this powder really dry, uh, you keep it under cover, and you don't really have a lot of damp environment and damp atmosphere really in between your hunting days, I think you're probably good to go. But as always, you need to do some testing on your own uh, to figure that out. Really, this was three shots, three round balls, three patches, really wasn't all that expensive. Uh, three caps, I know caps are hard to find, but to make sure that we're taking an ethical shot and we know our muzzleloader is performing when we need it to, those three shots are a lot cheaper than wounding an animal or missing out on a big trophy buck. So that's the kind of thing I encourage you to do some testing on your own when you get the opportunity to see how it performs in your muzzleloader and your environment. Um, really, I was, I was kind of disappointed in those first initial tests there. I was, I was expecting a little bit more, but I think really it just came down to the really nasty weather that we had those first four days and the last seven really kind of worked out for the triple seven. So it's kind of a toss up. Uh, you know, I can't really tell you what to think on it, um, but I'm interested in, in what you think about it. And, uh, you know, would you let your muzzleloader sit with triple seven for an entire week or would you dump that load uh, before going back to work on Monday? Let me know. I'm curious and it helps me inform more videos and, and try to get the word out about muzzleloaders and try to make them seem a little less intimidating. So now I'm going to go through and just clean up this muzzleloader like I would with any muzzleloader and uh, oil it up, get it back in the safe and uh, we'll get ready for some other videos. So I really I can't thank you enough for watching. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I hope this answers some questions about muzzleloading and muzzleloading with 777. Um, that's all I have for you. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit ilovemuzzleloading.com and uh, We'll catch you next time.